requiring action, which is 11.2.2. .2. That's what it is. Council, ladies and gentlemen, staff, I see that we have quorum and I call this regular meeting for the Town of Pelham for Monday, August 13th, 2015, <coughs> to order. Before we begin our formal agenda, I would ask um, that we would actually have a moment of silence, and Councillor Papp suggested this, uh, for the two police officers and the two residents in uh, Fredericton that were murdered uh, recently. Uh, let's keep them and their, f and their families in our prayers this evening. So if we could have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. There were 10 children uh, that were affected because of that, because of their parents were, were killed. So let's keep them in our, in our thoughts and prayers as well. We'll now begin the formal agenda with the singing of the national anthem. And I would ask Councillor Papp to lead us and all who are able to rise and join in. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true Thank you, Councilor Papp. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First, we have the approval of the agenda. It's been moved by Councilor Ribiak, second by Councilor King, that the agenda for the August 13, 2018 regular meeting of Council be adopted. Are there any changes <coughs> to that, Councilor Kersey? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to add under Section 15, motions and notices of motion, a notice of motion whereby um, myself and Councilor Durley will be bringing forward a motion on September the 4th uh, with respect to the formation of a hospitality advisory committee. Okay. Thank you. Second by Councillor Durley. Yes. So if we can call the question on adding that uh, to the agenda, all those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Is there another item? Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And also giving notice of motion, thing will be brought forward on September the 4th meeting where we will establish a community center user group council that can sit and meet and collectively deal with their with their wants and their needs and the okay. just, just to help with the coordination of running the community center. Okay, thank you. Councillor Kersey understood was going to second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. Councillor Rubiak. Mr. Mayor, I wonder whether we might give consideration to moving item eleven two two with regard to bed breakfast establishments, vacation or term <coughs> rentals, to uh, the beginning of the meeting out of consideration of the <coughs> time and patience of those in the gallery who are here specifically for that purpose. Okay. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor King? <coughs> All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. So we'll, uh, we'll put that uh, immediately at between four and five. Okay. Is that what you're, you were yes. suggesting? Okay, thank you. <coughs> Any other changes to the agenda? No. Okay, there being none, I'm going to call the question <coughs> on the agenda as amended. All those in favor? 
Any opposed? That motion carries as amended. Thank you. Next is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. That is any conflicts of interest that any members of council may have. Do any members have any conflicts of interest on any of the items on the agenda? None, Mr. Mayor. None, Mr. Mayor. Okay, can that be so noted? I have none either. So thank you. So if the clerk could um, note that in the minutes. Thank you. Now, as has been moved by resolution, uh, we'll deal with 11.2. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to find it here, Councillor. Sorry, that's 1121. Maybe you moved it already. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we're just getting the motion here. The councillors uh, signed the motion ahead, so it has been moved by Councillor Ribiak, second by Councillor King. Be it resolved, the council received the report on bed and breakfast establishments and vacation rental accommodations report for information, and that staff be directed to undertake broad community consultation and initiate the process to amend the town zoning bylaw and introduce licensing for bed and breakfast establishments and vacation <coughs> rentals. Ribiak King, do you want to start that off, Councillor Ribiak? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Don't mind if I if I do. I have some comments that I want to make with regard to uh, uh, to the motion. Oh. They're making so my problem. Ask them to please. Well, I don't know that we can shut the door, but you, can you please ask them to keep quiet? Councillor, I did uh, have a request from the director of planning to make a statement. Okay. I did ask, uh, the Director of Planning has indicated that she has a statement that she'd like to make prior to uh, Council's consideration of this. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're trying our best here. Uh, I'd ask the Clerk if we can... Thank you. Madam Director. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to respond to some things that were written in the newspaper and on social media that do not accurately reflect the discussion that staff had with residents regarding this matter. Can we close the, we close the doors? Is that possible? One moment, please. Just remove them from the room. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <coughs> I would ask all to speak as loudly as they can so people can hear. We do have an amplification system, and uh, the clerk has turned up the volume as much as possible. So thank you. Ms. Weens. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to respond to some things written in the newspaper and on social media that do not accurately reflect the discussions that staff had with residents with regards to this matter. Some of the comments made damage my professional credibility and integrity, as well as those of my colleagues who attended recent meetings on this matter. Firstly, I would like to clearly and simply state that I, nor any other staff at the meetings at any time suggested that bed and breakfast establishments and vacation rentals should be allowed throughout the town, including all residential subdivisions. What I have said is that the zoning bylaw needs to be amended to define these uses and then identify where these uses should or should not be located. By doing so, the town would have a tool to control these types of uses. Licensing is potentially another tool. I was asked by a resident if my report tonight would recommend that these uses not be permitted in the residential R1 zone. 
What I said is that I would not be recommending where these uses would be permitted at this time. I stated that we need to go through the process to amend the zoning bylaw and to have a fulsome consultation with the community prior to being in a position to recommend something to council. If I were to state that I would recommend that these uses should not be allowed in the residential R1 zone now, that would be prejudicial to the process we need to undertake and would be unprofessional of me to prejudge the outcome. I'm a professional planner and I take my responsibility as a professional planner seriously. To have written that staff recommendation intends to permit this use in every home within the town, every home on every street in every neighborhood is not true. That was not been said by myself or any other staff member attending the meeting that we've had to date. I most certainly appreciate that there are strong positions about these uses in the Lookout neighborhood. Me and my colleagues who have attended these meetings did say that we have heard what is being said and we are listening. We have not discarded their concerns. We have not discarded the 85 identified facts in the fact-finding session that was held. In fact, it was staff who reached out to this group and suggested we have a fact-finding session so that we could drill down to understand the issues. We advised those in attendance at the meeting that we would include those 85 facts in our report to council so that council would also be informed about what was identified and we told the group that we thought they were important. To have written those facts and to say that we have discarded the facts is not true. We did not say that we view bed and breakfast establishments and vacation rentals as a revenue raiser for the town or a new revenue stream for the town coffers. We did say that there was potential for a loss in revenue from taxation and possibly license fees when we were questioned by such by residents. We made no statement or claim that we thought this is a source of revenue that the town should pursue and to suggest that we did is untrue. We did clarify that licensing, licensing fees would have to be reasonable to cover only administration costs if such a program was introduced. And it cannot be used to generate revenue for the town. It is irresponsible for people to take comments out of context from the discussion being had. <coughs> what had been written in the paper and on social media is not based on the facts of the discussions we had and is prejudicial to the professionalism of staff who have been engaging in these discussions. I feel it is important to set the record straight. This report before you tonight for consideration is to receive the report for information and then for staff to engage in a fulsome discussion with the community about where or where not bed and breakfast and vacation rentals may be permitted and if they are permitted under what conditions. Following that, there will be a further report with a recommendation to council to consider. There is no bylaw being considered tonight to permit these uses in all areas of the town. There is no licensing bylaw being considered tonight. To go through the process to amend the zoning bylaw and introduce licensing will take some months and will not be con concluded before the next municipal election. I hope that clears up some of the statements made in the paper and on social media. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Means, for, for clearing those items up. We appreciate that, um, and I'm sure uh, Council appreciates it, and I'm sure the community appreciates that as well. And there, there, is, there are a number of people that have been concerned, uh, and we see them here in the chamber, and we see them outside at, uh, at Town Hall because of what was published in social media and in uh, a newspaper in an op-ed forum that was unsigned. And uh, so I appreciate you correcting the record this evening. I would propose that when we get to uh, looking toward the motion that we also receive your, um, your response this evening, formally receive that, include that in the, uh, in the minutes of this meeting so that uh, those that aren't here are able to review that as well. So thank you very much. <laughs> Councillor Ribiak, I um, had turned to you initially and you did move the motion. Uh, are you prepared to speak to it now or I can turn to another councillor if there's some no, questions I'm good. or comments? I'm good. Thank you Thank very you much, Councilor. Mr. Mayor. And uh, um, I do have, as I said, some comments that I want to make with respect to this issue and to establish uh, exactly where I am with regard to, to the issues as they are. Before I do that, though, 
I do want to make a comment with regard to, um, uh, again, what might have been um, spread throughout uh, discourse in the town on email and otherwise. I think we've just indicated, all of us here on Council, that uh, we have no conflicts of interest with regard to this issue. Uh, it was uh, apparently stated somewhere um, online that uh, some of us on, on Council, and I think my name was used uh, in connection with that, that we have some sort of conflict, that we are here to protect our friends or uh, other interests in, in this. So I just want to make the, uh, the record absolutely clear. Um, I don't operate either bed, bed or breakfast or um, a short-term vacation stay. I have no friends or family who do, to the best of my knowledge. I don't know anybody who does, again, as far as I know. So any intimation to that effect is just uh, wrong, incorrect, and uh, I make that as a, as a public statement so that it would be clear that if, 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 there is, uh, if that intimation continues, uh, it, it's simply a lie, and anyone articulating it would be a liar. So I just want that to be clearly understood in the plainest possible English. Now, with, regret, with respect to, um, uh, to my position with, with regard to, uh, to the issue at hand, I am very sympathetic to the need to strongly control short-term vacation rentals, bed and breakfast establishments. We residents, we, people have the right to secure and stable neighborhoods and to the preservation of neighborhood character that they work hard, work hard to build and to maintain. In fact, that's why we have a zoning bylaw that segregates uses, commercial uses to commercial areas, residential to residential, etc. Not only to improve efficiency in providing services, but to separate impacts of one kind of activity from areas where those impacts are inconsistent. So I am strongly in favor of the most effective bylaw that we can enforce, and that regulates the existence and operation <clears throat> of both the kinds of establishments that we're talking about this evening. I do not believe, and I think that generally speaking, most people do not believe that a complete ban is an effective bylaw. Not only would, would it not survive a legal challenge, because as the report tells us and as we understand elsewhere, that it is impossible to ban illegal use, it just wouldn't be effective, it wouldn't work. A complete ban would have to comprehensively prohibit short-term or temporary housing of any kind to be effective. Exclusions for all the many activities which are benign and part of the normal course of owning a home would create loopholes that would defeat the purpose. How could enforcement be achieved if there's no way to tell the difference between paying customers and non-paying short-term guests, such as visiting friends or relatives, house sitters, pet sitters, live-in caregivers or other employees, billeted exchange students or visiting tournament athletes, or any of the other circumstances in which people legitimately make our homes their homes for short periods. And that isn't even tackling, Mr. Mayor, the issue of secondary suites in that, that, that by, provision, by, by provincial policy will be allowed in most homes and will therefore, by definition, carry shorter term uh, residence in all communities, again, by, by provincial uh, policy. But the staff's report informs us that an effective bylaw that would control and license both short-term vacation uh, rentals and bed and breakfast is entirely within our jurisdiction to pass and implement, which, by the way, is what most people who have addressed this issue have asked for. Through their communication, though their communications begin with a call for a complete ban, they go, they go on to describe what they want is, in effect, a strong regulatory regime that is effective at, restrict, at restricting uses to appropriate zones. So effective zoning would provide for short-term vacations and, and uh, bed and breakfast establishment to be res restricted as to where they're allowed, limits on the size and the numbers, standards to be adhered to, health and safety considerations, parking, etc. And licensing, to my mind, is an essential element of the use in, in that, of that use in, in, in that the need to obtain a license would tell us who is operating the short-term vacation rental, tells us the premises to which the license applies, allows us to educate the operator about the requirements and restrictions that apply to the use, and allows us to revisit the operator annually or whatever interval for which the license is valid. But most importantly, the bylaw could specify that the operation of a short-term vacation rental without a permit 
is a specific violation for which we can hold the property owner accountable, and the violation can be associated with a penalty severe enough to make challenging the bylaw completely inadvisable. Property owner would need to know that whatever the practical challenges to making the case that short-term vacation rental is in violation of the bylaw, if proved, the penalty would be severe enough to make the risk not worth taking. So I am fully supportive of the recommendation staff makes in this very excellent report to us that we initiate <coughs> the zoning bylaw amendment process, which includes, of course, extensive public consultation, and that we consider the bylaw amendment that will be brought to Council as a result of the process. I believe that what will come to us will be strong, effective, and enforceable regulatory regime that this use requires of us. I'm interested in some greater detail, Mr. Mr. Mayor, with respect to what would be the fastest timeline possible to achieving a zoning bylaw amendment and thereafter a licensing bylaw if it's, if it's separate and, uh, and apart. Those are my comments, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Councillor, uh, are you looking for an answer for that? I believe Ms. Weems if, if spoke one, about it. Yes. Ms. Weems, uh, you did speak about it. I guess it depends on the feedback. It certainly does depend on the feedback, but you're looking at probably four to five months for a zoning bylaw amendment. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ribiak, anything? And thereafter, I suppose a licensing bylaw would be a separate consideration in order to, uh, to effectuate the, the uh, regulation of the, of the zone. Let's hear from the director. Ms. Weens? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we would certainly try to bring a licensing bylaw uh, either shortly thereafter, if not together with the zoning bylaw amendment, uh, but it would, shortly, it would follow shortly thereafter. And it's, it's a separate document. Those would be two separate bylaws. Yes, they are two separate documents. Um, they deal with two different issues around uh, kind of the operations and management and the permissions of use. Good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Others, I saw Councillor Durley. Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to build on what was just said, uh, I agree 100% with the uh, report from staff and the timing is just right because now with a uh, zoning bylaw amendment and licensing agreement or licensing bylaw will certainly take the short term reading in later on in the meeting we have under the treasury report that the uh, brand new comprehensive zoning bylaw is underway and a matter of fact it's about 60 percent done from what I understand so that will be coming forward so the amendments that will be done here can be incorporated into the into the comprehensive zoning bylaw which will take place and and there will be stuff like this will never ever have to come up again and we do have to keep uh, emotion out of this the facts will be there and the guidelines will certainly be in place and uh, I think any misunderstandings <coughs> will not exist after that thank you okay thank you very much councillor any other councillors? Councillor King? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. I don't want to rehash all of what has already been said. We have an excellent 15-page report from staff that clearly outlines what the recommendations are, both from a staff perspective and also from our solicitor. We currently have 20 properties um, that are operating in Pelham as bed and breakfasts, and, the, and we have not heard any concerns coming forward up until this point. I think our biggest concern right now, aside from safety, which would be my priority, um, is the fact that the properties that are being affected now are being affected because of absentee landlords. And I see that as the hurdle that we have to overcome. We clearly have um, had ha have had sorry consultation uh, with the homeowners in that area, and the recommendation is to have a broad community consultation. So anyone throughout town, anywhere, will have an opportunity to provide input to staff on this matter going forward. <coughs> other than that, I have no other comments. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor King. Other members of Council? Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had uh, quite a number of questions that I was going to ask our director and try to bring clarity to uh, some of these issues, but I think if, if one sits down and reads the very comprehensive report that the director has produced, 
And, it, and it tie that to the comments that she has uh, presented at the beginning of this meeting. I think that's an unnecessary waste of time for this council. Um, I will support going ahead and having broad community uh, consultation. I would suggest that perhaps an amendment to the motion uh, would be put forward and that we direct staff to bring forward a recommendation report follow with respect to the zoning bylaw amendment and the licensing of uh, home sharing establishments um, within the town of Pelham. It's a subtle difference, Mr. Mayor, but if one reads this motion, it almost looks like we're fully committed to mm -hmm. go forward with regardless of the community consultation. So the idea of inserting the recommendation report is to bring clarity to the subject that <coughs> no decision has been made at this point in time. If we yeah. think of how we, we work through by, uh, bylaw uh, amendments for developments, we get an information report, which is what we have in front of us, and then staff subsequently brings forward a recommendation report after digesting all the information and collecting input from the public. So it's a subtle difference, but I think it sends a, a message to the public that nothing has been cast in stone and that we, we are looking for input across the community. And, and I would suggest, Mr. Mayor, that um, our consultations be <coughs> held in different parts of the community. Um, and that people would feel comfortable uh, gathering with their neighbors and providing input as opposed to one section coming into an unfamiliar area. So it's a small community, but be that what it may, neighborhoods are neighborhoods. I think for us, uh, Mr. Mayor, and I'm not going to reiterate what my colleagues have said or what the report has said, other than to say, for us to stick our heads in the sand and think that this business of home sharing is going to go away, we're fooling ourselves. The province of Ontario recognized that, that this disruptive technology and this disruptive economic approach was growing and snowballing across our province. And in 2016, in fact, uh, formed an advisory council to seek input across the province from different sectors, from those who had a vested interest and those who were living in the communities that were impacted. And out of that, um, that work, a document was produced by the province of Ontario which gives very specific guidelines to municipalities on how they can deal with this phenomenon as it crops up in their community. I would encourage all of you to have a look at it because I think what we are undertaking here follows those guidelines. That document speaks to the types of things that can be incorporated in the licensing bylaw as well as the zoning bylaw to bring effect to trying to have peace and quiet enjoyment within our neighborhoods. I think that's the goal of all of us. I think when this process started several months ago and a couple of us re received a couple of complaints and we went to the first few meetings, some, one of which was held on a street, in the middle of a street with some 80 people. The whole intent was to engage with the community, understand the concerns, and try and bring about some resolution to those concerns so that we could, again, restore peace to the, to the uh, particular neighborhood that was impacted. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I would just put out to staff that we want this consultation to be as broad and fulsome as possible. We would like included in the consultation is not just the zoning bylaw consultation, but we want to have a fulsome discussion around the characters of the licensing that we're considering. Those types of things that, that the public would like to see included within the licensing bylaw. Such things as specific zones for specific types of home sharing because there are a variety. It's not one and the same to say home sharing. It's, it's a very broad spectrum. How many bedrooms should be included? What sort of separation should be between the existence of one Airbnb or vacation rental or home sharing and another? Um, should we have site plan control? Many municipalities institute site plan control just as we do with many of our developments. They institute site plan control 
when an Airbnb or a home sharing um, undertaking taking is brought forward, such things as parking, amenity space, fencing, all of those things will add to the quietude and the enjoyment of the neighbors. So I want that to be included in the discussion, uh, Madam Chair. Madam Director. Um, there are, there have been municipalities, believe it or not, that have in fact reached out to the on-site on -site platforms, uh, Vancouver being one, and we're not, we're not Vancouver, but perhaps it's something that we as a municipality in the region of Niagara, mm -hmm. as a united force, could reach out to some of these platforms and have them put on their platform that the only way they can be listed on their platform is that they must show their license number to prove that they are a licensed operation. Vancouver has been very successful with that, Airbnb, Expedia, and some of the other platforms. <coughs> we need to have an understanding of the types of penalties if someone should not follow the guidelines that we've established within the zoning bylaw and within the licensing. I think there's an issue that we need to understand and one of the things we've heard in our discussions with the neighbors centered around operation of multiple properties owned by one individual who puts in a, a manager or not and I think we need to have that discussion. A traditional Airbnb is defined as a residential dwelling with two or three bedrooms available for short-term rental where the owner lives in the dwelling. Mm -hmm. By establishing such a regulation, we now have someone who will be held responsible to make sure that those short-term renters follow the rules that are established, to have someone that the, res the residents that are adjacent to them can go to in the event of a concern. I think we need to look at having restrictions on placing a de facto tenant because a lot of times the <coughs> Licensing allows tenants to put short-term rentals in and that opens up the opportunity for someone to put a de facto tenant in there at a dollar a year and then have that tenant rent it. And I think that we need to look at that and make sure that that does not happen, that it must be operated within a, a residential neighborhood by a registered owner. owner. So Mr. Uh, Mayor, I look forward to the engagement of our community um, I look forward to our staff bringing forward a, another very comprehensive report in the form of a recommendation report such that we can deal with this issue that is, uh, has arisen in our community in a way that will help to restore the, the strength and the types of communities and neighborhoods that, that we all have enjoyed over the years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, you suggested that there be an amendment uh, certainly, you talked about the broad based consultation, which I think staff have noted and uh, and and can be incorporated in that the term that's used broad undertake broad community consultation. Um, I don't know if you had a wording amendment. Uh, the CAO has been, kind of been working on one here, uh, based on what you said. I would have, I would just strike the initiate the process to amend the zoning town zoning bylaw and introduce licensing and just say and that staff be directed to bring forward a recommendation report with respect to amending the town uh, zoning bylaw yeah. and uh, establishment of a licensing bylaw with respect to um, uh, For bed and breakfast home establishment and vacation rentals. Yes, that's yeah. correct. Okay. We'll see if the clerk has that and we'll see if there's a seconder <coughs> for that. Madam Clerk. Uh, an amendment proposed by Councillor Akurzi uh, to strike the words from the original motion and initiate the process to amend the town zoning bylaw and replace them with that staff be directed to bring forward a comprehensive recommendation report to amend the zoning bylaw and establish a licensing bylaw for bed and breakfast um, and short term vacation rental use. Thank you. Okay, yep. great. Thank you very much. Is there a seconder for that? Councillor Durley? 
Uh, to the amendment, Mr. CAO, you had a comment? Just a clarity, Mr. Mayor, can you clarify that you were asking for a draft licensing bylaw or a recommendation report on la licensing? Councillor Kersey, what do you, what do you, I mean, yeah, you don't want to get a bylaw and then you go, no, no, we don't agree with this. So you want to bring something back that's Correct. higher level? Correct. Okay. And then out of that, then we can, and there may be attached to the recommendation report a sample, but if in fact that's the direction we choose to go, we can have a sample bylaw attached to it as an appendix. Okay. So I think the motion, the amendment is a recommendation report yes. as opposed to a bylaw. recommended bylaw. Right. Yes. yes. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Uh, Councillor Durley, you're okay with that? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. To the amendment, anyone else to the amendment? I'm going to say that uh, that was my concern when reading the, the recommended motion from staff, the words initiate, uh, I think we're in here, and um, introduce. And I thought that, that folks perhaps not familiar with our parlance here or the way in which we approve motions here may jump to conclusions. Um, so I think this does clarify it, Councillor Kersey, and I'm, I'm uh, very, very supportive of it as well. Uh, I think it's, it's important to listen to the community, which is the first part in a very broad-based way, but then come forward with a report that would outline in a high-level way, this is, the, this is what we've heard, and this is the direction that staff are recommending based on what we've heard. Right. Then there can be that opportunity for additional feedback from the community based on what's, what's there. But it would be sort of like a, something that's, that's formal that's there that people can look at mm -hmm. as opposed to hyperbole or thinking of what they what might be there so I think that's the better way to to go with it so I'm uh, fully supportive of it as well so thank you for proposing that are there other questions before I call the question on the amendment Councillor Papp well not to the amendment no. okay so just for clarity the motion will now read if if approved and we're gonna vote on it in a second here uh, that staff be directed to undertake broad community consultation and here's the amendment and, uh, sorry, disappeared. And that staff be directed to bring forward a comprehensive recommendation report to amend the zoning bylaw and a recommendation report regarding the establishment of a licensing bylaw for bed and breakfast establishments and vacation rental use. And that will be something then that the community can look at and based on the uh, consultation, see if that's the direction that we want to go, okay? So we're ready for calling the question on the amendment. All those in favor, any opposed, that amendment carries unanimously. Thank you very much, Councillor Kersey. Uh, and again, that now that that's approved, it just means that that's future action. It's not something that we're going to approve tonight or anything like that. Councillor Papp, you indicated you wanted to speak any further. Councillor Kersey, point, you're done? Okay, Councillor Papp. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Firstly, I want to thank, on behalf of Council, all of you yeah. who gave us your feedback and information I think it's vitally crucial that we hear back from you and it's important that we take all this information and make it part of our deliberations, particularly the consultations. I am going to share with you because this for me in some respects is deja vu and I'll explain very briefly to you. Also I want to thank um, our Ms. planner, Ms. Weens, for thoroughly clarifying what I think most of us and including myself, we're a little bit concerned about what direction we were going in, but it was important that we understand that this is something that needs a very, very thorough type of uh, engagement with all of you. Thirdly, it's almost ironic, uh, how can you say positively ironic, over 30 years ago I was involved in a community in a senior staff level where we went through exactly the same type of process. There we were dealing with same thing, residential homes were, were, which were being, quite frankly, improperly being used, illegally being used, and they were part of a whole process that was taking place in the healthcare sector. We informed, along myself as a staff member, along with elected municipal officials, community, and we went through all the pluses and minuses of what we needed to do to create what we considered to be an appropriate, if you want to call it, at that time they weren't called uh, bed and breakfast, but to accommodate and lodge those individuals in an area where they would be safe, 
that the person that was looking after them would be properly li licensed and, for that matter, properly informed. The basis of that particular information, and I'll be glad to share it, became the platform for what was then now is forms what they call the Rest and Retirement Home Act. That became the legislative model that, for, that was put into place to protect seniors, protect those people that were being discharged from psychiatric facilities, and for the unscrupulous operators who were using their, uh, their, their homes for this notion. Here, I am very pleased and very proud to have been a member of the community of Pelham, just like my, my colleagues here. We want to keep the character and the flow and the aspect of what we consider to be our community, and we certainly do not want to impose things, and it may, whether it's rightly or wrongly, those are things that, we, that will change the character of our neighborhood. I have been a residential homeowner for years here, built homes here, and I had the same sort of you want to call it indirect concerns. I think by us starting on this, not starting and completing it, it may take longer than what you anticipate, but in fact we will develop an appropriate, as Councillor Kersey says, a recommendation report that clearly stipulates how these um, entities are to operate if in fact we decide to go that way, or if in fact, we, and along with that, how we shall license them to make sure that they are compliant with not only our, our uh, regulations, but those of the province as well. So I look forward to this, and I thank uh, our, again, our planner for clarifying this, and to all of you, because this information cannot be lost. It was, like I said, it was so, how can I say, eye-opening. Eye when I re was reading all the concerns, I thought, this has been done. Vancouver has an example, and I'll, I'll share with a municipality not far from here. They went through the same thing, and it took time, but we definitely want to hear from you, and we will definitely incorporate that as we move forward in trying to reconcile, resolve, and, and maintain our uh, community integrity. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, members of council. Okay, thank you, Councillor Papp. Other members to the motion as amended? to um, echo some of the comments from uh, my colleagues around the table. Certainly appreciate uh, the interest and the care and the concern of uh, members of the public that are here this evening. Uh, thank you for uh, sending us questions and emails and letters. Um, thank you as well for um, signing a petition. Um, I also thank you for those that looked at the report. I think it's really important mm -hmm. to do that. Um, to see what was being proposed <coughs> versus uh, what was not being proposed and that was being talked about in the community. And so we are here this evening, really, I look to Councillor Kersey, you, you raised it, I believe, at our council table a couple of months ago uh, because of concerns from the community with this type of issue. These are very much so disruptive technologies, uh, things like Airbnb and all of the other platforms, uh, they say, that are used uh, to do this, and they, they do impact communities, and we understand that. Obviously, it's something that some folks want us to snap our fingers and change and ban, um, and we've heard from staff and our legal counsel that, that that can't work. It has to be regulated somehow, is what we're being told. And so that's in the report and that, that's to be shared with you. So what's the best way in which we might regulate this disruptive technology? And the motion that council is considering right now is working together with you in the best way possible in a very broad-based consultation process to maintain the character of our town while all this disruption is going on. How do we, how do we make it best for our community to deal with these matters so that we can have that character maintained. And so that many of you, all of us that are homeowners have invested in our homes. We wanna make sure that that value is there. We care about our homes and our community is one of those in Niagara, I'm gonna say, that, that cares about our homes. We have you know, contests for, for garden shows, et cetera, because of that. And those are some of the types of things that we wanna maintain. The report does outline a number of elements that other uh, communities have looked at, ways in which they've addressed it. 
I'd encourage you to read that, and I, I would ask the clerk to uh, put this report on the website in a way that can easily be looked at um, so that you can start thinking about that as we do the consultation process. What are the elements that would best help you in your neighborhood and best help our town? Should they go in a specific area only? Should it be in, or, and, and, and what types are there? And I appreciate the distinction that many have made regarding the idea of the bed and breakfast, which is owner occupied, and also the, I think what's in quotes, the vacation property, which is not owner occupied. And Councillor Kersey spoke a little bit about that. And I think there's some distinction there. But I also appreciate Councillor Ribiak talking about what do you do about billets or somebody visiting for a while or you go away on a trip and you're having somebody watch your house how do you how's that how are those dealt with we want to make sure that that's covered as well I would um, I did receive some feedback from a uh, direct feedback from a couple of individuals about the legal elements and they were hopeful to get that perhaps in a letter from our solicitor so that may be helpful as we move forward Miss Weens on that so I'd encourage you to to consider that uh, as opposed to just simply in a report maybe our we should get a letter from from our lawyer on that so that uh, folks can see that but it is extremely important to listen to each of you and to listen to others that can't be here this evening uh, to to deal with this and have a very very broad community consultation I've asked that the report uh, already be available online and I would ask the clerk to make that easily accessible and I think if council approves this motion that the recommendation in the report actually be amended just as we amended it this evening so that uh, the public knows what we've what we've changed the clerk has also written me here um, madam clerk if you want to just comment on this one uh, just if anyone is interested in the ongoing procedure my business cards are available on the podium there they can contact me directly through email Okay, thank you. And also I talked about earlier the uh, uh, report here from Ms. Weens, and I do want to thank her as well for uh, clarifying things at the start. Uh, so I'd, I'd look for a motion, uh, an amendment, that the statement made by Ms. Weens, Director of Community Planning and Development, be received uh, as part of this process as well. So moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey. On that. There being none, I call the question on the amendment. All those in favor? Any opposed? The amendment carries. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, those are my comments. Unless other council colleagues have any comments, Councillor Papp, you very, have a very, question or comment? Just very quickly, yep. that we, as we move through this, that we establish the consultation process <coughs> framework. Mm -hmm. That that be very clear to how we're going to do it, and the general public and that would also understand that. So, I'll leave that in the hands of the staff. So, it's not just a general statement that there's an actual right. protocol that will follow that will allow a lot of back and forth and documentation thanks councillor pop I think uh, the CAO has uh, has heard that and that may be something that uh, the director of planning can put in a future reports Thank committee you. something what's the framework for the consultation to happen? make sure that we uh, we hear that and uh, and get that done properly councillor Durley thank you mr. mayor and just we're going to receive the information from uh, from our director of planning yes will that be posted as well I think that's important that it is posted because there's a lot of good information on there that clears up some of the doubts that some of the public may have and some of the misunderstandings that uh, go from the rumor mill so I think it's important that that be posted as well and so posted it be online councillor Papp and a cursory, I have okay. no, no, no objection okay, thank you councillor anything further uh, did we call the question on the amendment we did not so um, yes, oh, we did so that it's posted online and now to the main motion as amended twice the motion is that uh, be it resolved the council receive the report on bed and breakfast establishments and vacation rental accommodations report for information that staff be directed uh, to undertake a broad community consultation and be directed to bring forward a comprehensive recommendation report to amend the zoning bylaw and a recommendation report regarding the establishment of a licensing bylaw for bed and breakfast establishments and vacation rental use 
and that the statement made by Ms. Weens, Director of Community Planning and Development, be received and posted online. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for your involvement. Uh, as the clerk indicated, her cards are at the table uh, if you'd like to uh, send emails uh, and contact her. So thank you very much for that. Excuse me, now we move to... We're, we're, I'd ask you to save that, send us an email, or put it as part of the community consultation. Excuse we're going to be. This, and it's on the menu we're, prior to this. And I think every person thank here you. needs to hear the correspondence from Dana Taroni and okay. Patricia. Yeah, we are. Thank you. We, we are. That's a good point. Thank you. Let's, Council, um, shall we deal with that matter? Those matters? So, uh, Councillor Papp? Please, Mr. Harley, thank you. Um, I would, uh, so there's some two correspondence item items on uh, 9510 and 9511. I think the recommendation is to receive those uh, from Tyrone and Kohler. So is there a mover for that at this point? Uh, moved by a courtesy, second by a cop. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for that. So we've received those. Thank you. And that, that forms part of this as well. Thank you very much. Now we move back to our agenda for the evening. It's been moved by, I think we're, I thank you, we're done. But the request was if we could hear those letters read, please. No. It does affect no. everyone in this room. Yeah. And I think that's that's not standard practice. We'd encourage folks to uh, to look at those letters. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to have to ask you. We now have the remainder of our agenda to deal with, so I'm going to have to uh, ask that we move on. It's been moved by Councillor Ribiak, second by Councillor King. Be it resolved that the August 13th, 2018 report submitted regarding regional council be received for information. Are there any questions or comments? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. We need order. Thank you. There may well be people leaving right now, uh, so let's take a uh, brief break. Should people wish to leave, and then we'll we'll go to the uh, to the minutes of previous meetings. Thank you. Colleagues, thank you. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate that. We do have uh, the remainder of our meeting uh, to consider. So now for those that are following at home or following here with the agenda, we're now moving to adoption of minutes. Uh, and we'll deal with those together. It has been moved by Councillor King, second by Councillor Ribiak. Be it resolved, following minutes be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. Minutes of the special meeting of July 16, 2018, and also minutes of the council meeting of July 16, 2018. Are there any errors or omissions in those minutes? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Next, we move to number nine, which, which is consent agenda items to be considered in block. Uh, for those that may not know, we group items together, and um, that's to, to deal with them together if they're routine um, or just a motion to receive, etc. And so the question is, are there any items that councillors would like to lift for separate consideration and not to be dealt in block? 
Uh, I see Councillor Ribiak first. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. I wonder whether we might lift 931, the Meridian Community Centre sign variance. Uh, I have some questions. I don't know whether it will lead to a, a different motion, but we'll see where we are. Okay, 931, the Meridian Community Centre sign variance. Thank you. Uh, any others? Uh, we did deal with 9510 and 9511. Um, there was a request uh, from staff. They actually have a, they would have a different recommendation for council to consider regarding 941, which is the uh, the Kinsman Club and their home show date. Um, so if we can lift that for separate consideration, please. 941. Councilor Durley, you wanted to lift another? I, yes, please. Uh, 951. 951 which is the physicians and surgeons yes okay thank you any others we've already dealt with uh, we've already dealt with uh, 9510 and 9511 okay so thank you so what we'll do is we will uh, li look at the items under cons <coughs> uh, consent and then deal with those items that we just lifted. So it has been moved by Councillor Ribiak, second by Councillor King. Be it resolved that the following consent agenda items be received and the recommendations contained therein be approved as applicable. Staff reports of a routine nature for information or action. 932 Wellspring sign variance 2018. Be it resolved that Council receive the report and that the variance outlined in the report be approved. 933 Chemical, Biological, Radiological, Nuclear Explosives Memorandum of Understanding 2018. Be it resolved the Council receive the report regarding this matter and uh, that staff be directed to execute the Memorandum of Understanding, remain party to a multidisciplinary response to the hazardous materials incidents throughout the Niagara region and continue to investigate ways to enhance local capacity to respond to these types of incidents. 934, a report regarding the execution of a condominium agreement for Saffron Common, file number 26CD19-01017, and the motion be it resolved the Council receive the Department of Community Planning and Development uh, report for information as it pertains to this Saffron Common condominium and that the Council appoint the bylaw, approve the bylaw attached here to as Appendix A, authorizing the Mayor and Clerk to exercise a condominium agreement with Gray Forest Homes for Saffron Common. And that uh, area is um, uh, Port Robinson Road and Rice Road. Report recommending uh, regarding the execution of a development agreement for 62 Bacon Lane, file number DA0118. And the motion be it resolved that the Community Planning and Development Department report for 62 Bacon Lane be received and that the Council approve of the zoning bylaw, uh, sorry, the bylaw authorizing the Mayor and Clerk to enter into a development agreement with 2475650 Ontario Inc. regarding 62 Bacon Lane. Recommendation report regarding official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment, and site plan applications. 120 Summersides Boulevard. And that's at uh, Summersides and Rice Road on the south side. Be it resolved, the Council received the Department of Community Planning and Development report for information as it pertains to file numbers OPAM0417, AM0817, and SP0817 regarding 120 Summersides Boulevard. The Council approved the bylaw attached as Appendix B amending the official plan as it relates to 120 Summersides Boulevard to allow site-specific exemptions from policies relating to work-live units and site design. And the Council approved the bylaw attached as Appendix C, uh, um, amending the zoning to 120 Summersides Boulevards by adding site-specific provisions to the Residential Multiple 2 RM2-256 zone. And the Council approved the bylaw attached Appendix D authorizing the Mayor and Clerk to enter into a site plan agreement between the Town of Pelham and Mountain View Mid-Rise, Inc. Uh, 937, 2018, second quarter financial reports. This is what Councillor Durley uh, spoke about earlier. The motion be it resolved the Council receive the 2018 second quarter financial reports for information. Now we move to action correspondence for routine nature. Uh, one of them was lifted, so the next one that we're dealing with is 942. 
613 Lincoln and Welland Army Cadet Corps request to sell tags. Be it resolved the council receive the correspondence uh, with the request to sell tags and the council approve the request from the 613 Welland and Lincoln Army Cadet Corps to sell tags in the town of Pelham on the 15th and 16th of September 2018. Now we have information correspondence items and there's a number. Um, one of them had been lifted, so we're not dealing with that, but we are dealing with 952 Niagara Central Dorothy Runsling Airport second quarter report. Be it resolved, the council received the report for information. There's a letter here, 953, from the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, and the recommendation is to receive it for information. There's also the uh, Ombudsman's report under 954. Uh, which is the 2017-18 annual report from the Ombudsman Ontario and the recommendation is to receive that for information. There's a thank you letter from Lauren Bench, scholarship recipient from the Town of Pelham Scholarship uh, at E.L. Crosley and the motion be it resolved the council received the thank you correspondence from Ms. Bench, recipient of the Town of Pelham Scholarship for information. 956, Niagara Region results of stakeholder engagement for vacancy rebate program revisions be it resolved, the council received the information uh, and the Niagara Region um, August 1st, 2018 correspondence outlined and the results of the stakeholder engagement for vacancy rebate provisions and that's report CSD 41, 2018. Those provisions that are being recommended, we want to hear from the public on, uh, which deal with um, a re <laughs> uh, the, the rebate program for properties that are vacant, either as vacant land or properties that are vacant uh, with buildings on them. There's a letter here to myself on behalf of Council from the Premier, Doug Ford, following uh, a congratulations note uh, from, uh, from the pre that I provided to the Premier on behalf of Council and we're receiving that for information under 957. 958, there are two items here, uh, colleagues, that deal with um, 190 Cambro Road. Uh, 958 Daniel Pete comments re applications for zoning bylaw amendment AM 0218 draft plan of condominium. Be it resolved, the council received the correspondence for information. Uh, and also Frank and Doreen Miltonberg comments regarding the same item under 959. Colleagues, I, I wonder if we can um, deem those lifted perhaps and move them to consideration when we deal with the report, if that's okay. So uh, sorry about that. Uh, let's lift. 958 and 959 and deal with those later on in the agenda if that's okay with the consent of council? Yep. Okay, I see everybody um, nodding. So that's it for the consent agenda. Are there any items that council would like to discuss regarding any of those items under the consent agenda? This means not necessarily for those watching. This means not necessarily changing the recommendations in some cases to receive and other cases to approve but if there's any questions or comments on any of those items. Okay, are we ready? I'll call the question then. <clears throat> All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries, thank you. We lifted some items uh, for separate consideration. So we had uh, 931, so it has been moved by Councillor Riviak, second by Councillor King uh, regarding the Meridian Community Centre sign variance and the motion is be it resolved the Council receive the report Meridian Community sign variance and that the variance is outlined in the report be approved. Councillor Riviak, you stated you wanted to discuss that. I did, uh, <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I think you can uh, fix, it. fix that. Technical difficulty. The uh, oh, you found a way of doing that, did you? Ah, the, well, we, we don't need the upside, do we? It's a matter of changing the orientation of the uh, of the elevation. I was looking at the elevations, and um, and yes. Mr. Mayor, the uh, the elevations look um, pretty pretty good. I guess we have to go up and down this way. Oh, every page needs to be changed. Um, so just just a quick question with regard to uh, to the bylaw. We're talking about uh, changing the maximum allowable size of the sign for the wall. One of the elevations of the north side, and perhaps the same is true of the south side, has 
more than one sign. Do we need to give consideration through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, to the chief? Do we need to give uh, consideration in this to expanding or, or, or dealing with the, the, the total amount of signage there are on those two sides, given that it's more than just the the one side sign we're talking about? Sorry about the technical nature of this, no, Mr. Mayor. That's, just that's fine. Thanks. Chief? Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, yes, if you'd like to change that language to include that. The, the, so the one of the so what, can you give us just an overview of, so, of why this is before us and then yeah. if that if so that's, uh, is, needed to be changed? Technically, this is our building um, really exempt from the bylaw, but we've never had a building this big in, in Pelham, so the signage is quite enormous compared to any other sign we've ever had. So it just, just to make sure everybody's clear on what's going on, but the building is so large, the, the sign, sign size fits the building quite well. So. Um, it exceeds the lineal footage that's allowed within so many feet of a building. So that's why we brought it forward is that uh, it is kind of an extraordinary application. Okay, and to the councillors, uh, we'll probably have questions on that, but to the councillors' question about uh, most buildings, uh, I think the bylaw is that you can't have more than one sign on one side of the building. How, how is that, how should that be addressed? Uh, Technically, yes, yes we, we could look at it that way, but the building is split. Like, it's not one face. There's multiple breaks into the building. Really didn't think it was a big issue to have that brought in. We just were more up, um, worried about the actual size of the length and the size of the sign. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I, and I appreciate that. And, in fact, the signs look, look good, and I don't have, have an objection to what's being shown. It's just that, that I want to be sure that if we're passing a bylaw on this, making an exception, even though it's for our building and it's, it's, it's outside the bylaw, that we don't be asked afterwards whether it's it's the aggregate of all the signs signs on that wall and did we did we do the right thing? So I don't know what, what what's required to to make the change to the uh, to the motion, uh, or maybe we can um, make some sort of an assumption with regard to that. But let me just see what that motion reads like. The motion is that we approve it. Uh, and the, the recommendation is regarding uh, the signs that are applied on sign one, two, three, and four. Are there only the four signs, Chief? Mr. Mayor, yes. So uh, perhaps, Councillor, it's covered because there are the four four signs. Although there, there are more than four signs, Mr. Mayor. That, that's the, that's okay, the so issue. So let's hear about why. Um, we have, for example, on the north side, we have the proposed sign on the side of the arena, but we also have the sign that's that's over the front door. Mm -hmm. And I think the same is true of the south side. And I just want to be sure that, that if we pass this bylaw, that we don't create a problem for ourselves later on. So maybe we, we just need to uh, address that within the report. Maybe just adding as outlined in the drawings or something like that? Something like that, yeah, absolutely. Chief? I think there's only the, are there only the four chief? I don't, I don't, excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't see the fifth sign. That's, there's four signs, there's four signs. I think, Councillor. So uh, probably the solution is as depicted in yes, yes. the attachment. I'm, 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 I'm good with that, as long as we, we know that the signs that, that are there. I do believe on the, on, we, we have currently a sign over the front door, and what's being proposed is another sign on the, on the wall of the, Oh, the arena. Okay. So I think I think I know what yeah. what the issue is. Uh, I think the CEO is no. So we'll turn to the CEO, yeah. Mr. CEO. The sign that you're currently viewing on the center is temporary. Ah. That sign will be removed and replaced with the design that you've been shown tonight. Well, that makes everything perfectly clear, and I thank Great. you very much for that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Others, Councilor Lane. Yeah. Just for clarification through you, Mr. Mayor, the sign that's over the door is now going to be gone, mm -hmm. and it's going to be just on a large wall of each 
of the south side and the yeah. north side? Is that mm -hmm. what I might Mr. understand? Mr. That is correct, Mr. Mayor. And there's nothing on the east or the west side? one sign on each corner through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, however, the sign that you currently see there is temporary. That'll be completely removed okay. and Good. replaced with the signs that you see in your package as far as locations go. So in the, if you're in the, um, how's this work here? If you're looking at it where it is now and the sign is there, that's gonna be removed and there's gonna be a sign over the activity center and then in the other corner uh, on on the uh, Exhibitor Arena, and that's on the north side. On the south side, there's this sign over the entrance as you go in. So come off the parking lot, go through the the uh, over the bump or the hump there, and there's a sign there. And then there's one also on the side of the building facing Rice Road. Is that correct? East side, yeah. On the east side. Yes. And it's on the Exhibitor arena side yeah, go ahead. if I might sir. is this at the request of the town or is this at the request of the sponsor of the community center who's making this request for this so CEO do you want to, are you able to answer the question um, the request is the, the the sign design was negotiated between the town and Meridian um, and they had they had uh, presented to staff um, an iteration of which we weren't thrilled with. So we had a conversation. They submitted a design that um, that that staff can recommend to council. Um, and uh, because again, this is our building in its uh, meridian sign, we felt that the best course of action was to process this application the same way we would anybody else's. So that's why we're applying basically for our own permission to do something, um, because it is in it is in um, variance to what the sign bylaw would call for. So um, it's a meridian design, um, and it's something that uh, that's part of the donor contribution agreement. That uh, again, the naming rights, if you will, for the building, and that was what was uh, negotiated with the agreement that council signed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Others. I just want to clarify, Chief. Um, my understanding of this, I want to make sure that that's correct. So. The, the, the building is so large that the least talked about the linear foot let, let's talk about that in English so we have a maximum width or size for a sign but that sort of contemplates maybe a smaller storefront or something like that but because this is so large uh, we've gone over that that maximum is that correct yes so there are the report talks about this it's uh, not a lot of detail but it does say that there's for example the Sobe sign we had to do this for the food basic sign and and so this when council considered a probably a year ago or, or longer the the a proportionality test instead of a linear foot test mm -hmm. so uh, uh, instead of you know as big as a bread box it's depends on the the proportion of the wall um, does this meet that proportionality test, I'll call it? It's smaller on a percentage basis. If you ever look at the Sobe sign and the basic <laughs> signs and go over the square footage of that building, the sign is much smaller. It's smaller. Okay, that's perfect. It's, that's the way the sign ball is written is restrictive to give us the, or allow us to view these oversized signs or these view of the bigger signs. So and you deal with it individually as opposed to, okay, that's great. I'm glad to hear that because some like somebody might uh, mistake the comments that were said earlier it's a huge sign it's a huge building but on a proportionality nature it's good to know that it's actually less than the proportions of other signs in the town so thank you very much for clarifying that uh, councillor Ribiak, you had proposed that you wanted some language just to make sure that it's as depicted in the report <coughs> or, are you, or are you please now given the questioning that was uh, okay there's going to be four signs there are four signs indicated in the report then that, that makes sense it, it wasn't making sense to me when i thought there were five signs okay perfect so are we ready for calling the question all those in favor any opposed that motion carries thank you the uh, the next item that has been lifted is nine four one and the clerk has actually uh, put together a separate recommendation here it's been moved by Councillor Ribiak second by Councillor King 
Be it resolved that council receive the correspondence from the Fawn Hill and District Kinsman dated July 18th, 2018, requesting that the date of the Pelham Home and Garden Show be changed from the third weekend in April to the first weekend in April. And the council refer the request to change the date of the Pelham Home Show and Garden Show to the first weekend in April back to staff for investigation and a report on available options. Uh, questions or comments? I, I'm going to uh, ask staff, uh, Mr. CAO, perhaps on the recommendation as opposed to simply accepting what they've requested. I think the third weekend in April is Easter uh, this year and they didn't want to be over the, the Easter weekend. Uh, can you just comment on why you're not recommending the council just approve that? Right, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, staff has uh, staff has indicated that this creates a conflict with ICE users. So, if the councilman were to go ahead on um, because we've already committed to ICE use for uh, April, uh, if we were to agree with this, it might create conflict between the agreements we already in place. So, what we're suggesting is that we may be able to accommodate this request next year. Uh, it's too short notice for us, and we've already made ICE commitments to other user groups. So, particularly, we have the Junior AAA team, the Junior B team, minor hockey. Um, if those teams advance into any level of playoffs, then we are obviously needing ice surfaces and that uh, uh, staff has indicated that to have the home show would create conflict in that. So um, we're recommending that we not approve the, chain, the date well, no, change you're, this you're year. you're recommending that it be investigated for report. Yeah, but, we're, but I'm saying that, you know, basically that's what's, that's what's going to come of this is because we've we've got to figure out the ice user commitments okay. that we've already got in place okay. and then um to uh, you know again to consider this may be too soon it may be too late rather um for this year that we may want to look at this accommodation next year for them um but again that's the issue that we've got okay all right thank you uh councillors uh to this i'm hoping it leads to a discussion as opposed to a uh, doors closed uh councillor lane yeah just uh through you uh, just a question is I know it's always been at the arena and it's always been where cold. there's a nice surface, but now that we have a, a large uh, basketball court area, is this something that is conceivable that could be entertained or is it uh, totally not workable? Are you able to answer that? Yeah, we wouldn't recommend having that in the uh, in the gymnasium facilities because of the flooring. Um, very expensive gym flooring, hardwood floor, and to be dragging tables in and have members of the public coming in and out over the course of a weekend, would, okay. we would sustain okay. damage that I wouldn't want to have That's to sustain. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Others? Councillor Riviak? And then, excuse me, and then there's the uh, the foyers and the, the upper level. It's not given to the use of those public areas? Um, if the kinsmen are amenable to that, which I can't answer, I don't know. Right. Um, they requested the arena, and I'm simply commenting on what they've requested. That space okay. that's there. Yeah. Councillor Durling? Oh, I thought you had something. No, no. no. Okay. They've been, they've been better. My, my comments have been aired, yes. Okay, thank you. Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it's appropriate to refer it back to staff to, to answer some of the questions that have been raised around the table. Also, to look at perhaps... Uh, <clears throat> being able to accommodate all the ice users in one mm -hmm. arena and uh, with all the seating and take the ice out of the other arena and those are yeah. things that will take some logistics to work out and staff to sit down and work through so yeah. let's refer it back to staff let them work through the issues let them meet with the kinsmen and see uh, and bring bring forward a report at uh, as at the earliest possible opportunity because they need to get their planning going yeah absolutely Okay, thanks very much, Councillor. Um, that was that was the solution that was recommended uh, when there was one ice user, not all of them, but one ice user, and the kinsmen happened to be part of that conversation, and they said, well, instead of using the excipiter, we could use the doula ban, right. uh, and then that would help one of the ice users. So, but it sounds like we need all of the ice users involved uh, to have that conversation, and and uh, so. That's why I'm supportive of this as well. We, you know, I'm hoping that we want to accommodate and we want to meet the um, the commitment that was made to the kinsmen to use the facility, and that was important to them mm -hmm. uh, and important to this council. But it sounds like we need to have some dialogue uh, before we it just gets approved. So that's what's before us. Unless there's anyone else, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Back to our consent agenda and those items that have been uh, lifted. I believe the next one, Councillor Gurley, is the one that you lifted. Yes. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It has been moved by Councillor Ribiak and second by, by Councillor King that we receive it. Uh, so, Councillor Gurley. A letter to uh, the Mayor and Clerk and Councillors. 
uh, regarding nominations for an outstanding Ontario physician in our community, the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario Council Award. Uh, we do have some excellent physicians in, in our town, and I would like to perhaps make this public for people to have a look at it. And in fact, if they see that their doctor or a doctor that they know is worthy of this, we would be remiss if we didn't nominate that person for it. So I would like to see this posted publicly so that people can see it and in input comes back to us so that we consider uh, uh, nominating somebody. We have until October the 1st, but the, uh, I think it's very important that if somebody is worthy of this recognition that we certainly give it consideration. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. So is that an amendment that we not only receive it, but we also promote it to, Cir to the Circulate and promote it, yes. Okay. Circulate and, and promote. And request that the key, the public brings uh, potential nominees to our attention so that we can investigate. Okay. Is there a seconder for that? Uh, Councillor Papp? Uh, any other comments or questions to that? I'm going to call a question on the amendment that we circulate post and hear back from the community. All those in favor? We oppose that amendment carries and now to the motion as amended. Anything further, Councillor Durley? No, I've said okay. it all. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries as amended. Thank you very much. We look forward to hearing back from the community on uh, outstanding positions in our community, of which there are many. Uh, just to remind uh, the community that we did move a couple of items, 958 and 959, will be dealt with uh, shortly. And then we, we did dealt with uh, 9510 and 9511. So I believe that's, those are all the items under the consent agenda. So thank you very much for that. Now we move to reports from members of council. And uh, Councillor Durley, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I was honored to have been invited to the celebration of a long and well-lived life to Molly Rogers. She died a couple of weeks, uh, just a few weeks before her 105th birthday. The town has been uh, very gracious in attending her birthday parties. Uh, I attended two, and I'm sure you have attended uh, several, and uh, this was a very moving tribute. Uh, Shirley Lazarus, her daughter, did a great job of uh, setting all this up, and they did everything from a slideshow to, uh, to speeches and singing, and I think the, the highlight was uh, something I think that Andrew Lloyd Webber would have been proud to hear granddaughter Sophie Reed sang the song, All I Ask of You, and it was, uh, brought tears to your eyes. You know, it was uh, just a beautiful tribute and to a beautiful lady and a lovely young lady. Shirley asked me to bring forward thanks to the town for having been active in celebrating uh, not only her birthdays but also her life. Rest in peace, Molly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilor Durley. Thank you for representing Council uh, on that occasion. It's, it's one, of the, um, one of the wonderful things that we're able to do as, as uh, Council, Councilors or Mayor is to celebrate those that have milestones in their lives and uh, it's appropriate that we were invited to each of those uh, birthday celebrations for Molly Rogers. Rest in peace. Thank you. So it has been moved by Councilor Papp, seconded by Councilor Kersey, be it resolved that Councilor receive the verbal report from Councilor Durley regarding the celebration of life for 104-year-old Molly Rogers. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. We we'll pass along our condolences uh, to her family. Thank, Thank you. you. Now we move to uh, staff reports requiring action. The first, 11 one It has been moved by Councillor Kersey, second by Councillor Lane. Be it resolved the council received this Department of Community Planning and Development report for information <coughs> as it pertains to file numbers AM02182026 CD19 02018 regarding 190 Cambrough Road. The council approved the bylaw attached as Appendix E amending the zoning of 190 Cambrough Road from residential R1 to zone site specific residential multiple RM1285 zone. The council approved the draft plan of condominium subject to the conditions attached in Appendix F and the mayor be authorized to sign 
uh, the draft plan as approved 20 days after notice of council's decision has been received requiring by the Planning Act providing no appeals of the decision have been lodged. Uh, also with this we will I think under separate motion uh, receive those items of correspondence. Uh, questions, comments regarding uh, this? Councillor Ribiak. Thank you Mr. Mayor and I thank the uh, thank staff for having prepared uh, this material for us to look at. Uh, one of the questions that I had when we discussed this last was with regard to what could have been proposed on that land given current zoning and what was presented I think th through Upper Canada consultants uh, through uh, our staff were four uh, diagrams indicating uh, what could have been proposed as well as what has been proposed. I understand what's been proposed as a 14 unit uh, concept. There are three other drawings here. One has 20 units in it, one has three, and the third has six. My understanding of these, and, and I, I ask staff maybe to, to, to confirm my, my understanding, is that the two uh, diagrams, the one with three units and the one with six units, are consistent with, cur with current zoning, I guess, that th those two plans might have been proposed without asking us to, to do a whole lot. Uh, of changing of zoning. Is, is, is my understanding of that accurate? Ms. Weens. Yes, Mr. Mayor, through you, those would be uh, compliance with the R1 zone requirements. Okay, thank you. Uh, and through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you to, uh, to, to the director. So what I note, and, and again, I ask uh, perhaps the, uh, the director to, cr to confirm my understanding, that what's being proposed, the 14-unit concept, in fact provides for essentially the same number of buildings along the east and the west sides of the lot under the current zoning regime as is being proposed. What's being proposed is, is a condominium and, and, and the, the, the units might be multi-residential but the number of, of actual buildings would be essentially the same. If I'm correct in that assumption and I, I ask staff to, to confirm that, then as far as I'm concerned, I don't really see uh, that there is a, a to, to my mind, a large impact of moving toward what's being proposed and what could have been proposed just given the current regime. So okay. if I could let's, have that confirmed, then, then I will leave my comments yeah. at that level. I'm not sure I understand exactly what you're asking, but perhaps the director does and she can clarify it. Madam Director. What uh, the councillor is asking is if the number of units that are um, abutting uh, to the, I guess, east side uh, would be the same based on the current proposal um, if we compare it to what could be done in the R1 zone. I see. So that would be concept two, is that correct? Concept two has six buildings in it. Okay, so go ahead. And so, so along the uh, the east side, uh, there were there would have been four four. That's correct. Buildings uh, constructed that would have been on properties uh, abutting the properties that currently exist, and and essentially the fourteen unit proposal says the same thing. Same thing exactly. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Th thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. So so, my um, my concern when when having heard uh, the presentations on this earlier was that something was being proposed that was radically different than what could have been. I don't see that it is just on that basis, so I'm going to uh, support the, the motion going forward. Okay, thank you. Others? Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I was not at the public meeting, but I did read all the reports and uh, the report that we have before us this evening. And similar thinking to Councillor Ribiak, when I look at the options that the developer could have brought forward and if we look at the RM1 zoning and the concept plan that he presented, they could have not asked for any zoning amendment uh, in terms of side yards, backyards, etc. and they could have gotten up to 20 units. They could have also brought forward a concept plan to put uh, an apartment building on that piece of property mm -hmm. which would have invaded into the neighboring space 
to a, a much greater degree than, than what is being proposed. So I think, well, the density may be a little higher than the neighbors would prefer. I think given the options that could have been brought forward, I think it's, it's reasonable. It falls within our intensification guidelines uh, somewhere in the middle. And uh, so from that perspective, I think it's reasonable. Um, I do see that um, there were a number of concerns that were raised by the neighbors to the east. Um, and I believe that the majority of those will be handled at site plan, uh, such things as buffering and stormwater management, et cetera, et cetera. So when all of the, that engineering is brought to bear, albeit in, it's not a public process, the public will have an opportunity to read the reports when they come forward. So I think a lot of what has been put forward by the neighbors will be dealt with when we get to that site plan process and, and the developer build, <coughs> builds out his concept a little more fully. So I would hope and I trust that, uh, and I know that our staff will be very diligent at the site plan process in ensuring that those concerns that were put forward by the uh, neighbors will be addressed um, and that uh, appropriate urban design guidelines will also be enforced upon the development such that we have a high class development uh, neighboring on a, a, a very well respected neighborhood. So I would like to see that happen. There are two things that I, I think we need to talk about. One of them was a request by the neighbors that they be allowed to have eight foot fences should they be allowed or should they request that. And I think that's a reasonable uh, request and perhaps we can accommodate the neighbors uh, amending the, the fence bylaw at no cost to them uh, if it would um, help them feel uh, more secure in their, in their home and, and, and ensure their privacy. Mm -hmm. The last thing um, I'd like to bring up, Mr. Mayor, and direct through you to our director is, I was wondering, Madam Director, to, to add to the buffering between the proposed dwellings and the existing dwellings, if we would be allowed or would be able to pull the, the dwellings on the east side of the development mm -hmm. more to the center by one meter. So that would not be out of line with our thinking about having street face properties, having engagement with the street. Typically today, most people don't sit in their front yards and you know they pretty them up and put flower gardens and all of that sort of thing in would much rather probably have the amenity space to the rear of the, of the dwelling. So if we were to pull those dwellings one meter forward to the street, uh, it would add to the separation between the existing dwellings and the proposed dwellings. It would add to the amenity space for the new dwellings as well. So I don't know how we would go about doing that, uh, Madam Director, and perhaps you could comment on that for me. Uh, Mr. Beans. Mayor, yes, uh, through you, I think that would require us to make an adjustment to the draft proposed zoning bylaw to uh, reduce what would be the front yard setback for those units by a meter and thereby allowing an additional rear yard um, setback by a meter uh, for those units. So we'd have to make an adjustment to the uh, proposed zoning bylaw mm. to do that. Sorry, I thank you. Sorry, which road? The internal road? Internal road, yeah. The internal mm -hmm. road, yes. Um, so your proposal is what, to shift it over to the west? One to the meter? west, one meter. So on the west side, it's instead of 7.5 meters, it's 6.5 meters? No, no, the road would stay exactly where it is, but the dwelling unit would move closer to the road, oh, okay. the east side of that internal road, mm -hmm. by one meter. So that one... Um, Just that one block. One block of units would shift closer? by one meter to the internal road. Mm -hmm. We'd still want to maintain at least a six meter setback for the garage to ensure that right. you could get vehicular uh, parking in the driveway. Right, exactly. So, Mr. Mayor, through you, uh, Madam Director, would that be best done with an additional consultation with a developer prior to, prior to us approving that or 
Should, could we do that unilaterally, or what's your, what's your sense of that? Um, it, it could be done unilaterally. Um, my preference would be to have some dialogue with the developer <coughs> and the consultants. Um, they're not aware of this proposal, so it would be good to have that dialogue and maybe bring the bylaw forward to the next uh, council meeting and then um, we can uh, provide an update as to how, whether that materially changes kind of the design of the units. Okay. So, Mr. Mayor, in light of that, um, I'd like to make a motion that the report be sent back to staff for additional dialogue with the developer regarding the, uh, the proposed change and that a subsequent report be brought forward on uh, September 4th uh, council meeting. Okay, so the entire report? Yes. Okay, is there a seconder for that? Councillor Papp? Questions or comments uh, to that? Are there any other items? Uh, I wonder if Councillor, there may be other questions that we can get yeah. to now as opposed to just that piece. Okay. Sure. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask that maybe there there might be a few other questions. I know I have a couple uh, quick ones, and there might be other councillors. So before we call the question uh, on that and postpone it and send it back to staff, there That's might be a couple of things that we want to add to it. Okay. Are there others that would like to uh, ask some questions or make some mm -hmm. uh, suggestions that can be uh, talked about to the developer, Councillor Durling? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Looking at Appendix F. There are some 50 conditions involved here, and I think that touches on many of the concerns that were brought forward at the, at the public meeting, and I'm sure staff will be very diligent in making sure that these conditions are, are lived up to, and then the, uh, that being uh, mitigating the negative, possible negative effects that, that may exist, and I think the suggestion from Councillor Kersey is, uh, is a good one as well uh, for a privacy and a little bit of uh, uh, breathing space, actually. So, but again, these 50 conditions, I think, are uh, all-encompassing, and I think they look to uh, solving any possible conflicts that may come about. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any others? A couple of a uh, couple of questions, if I might. Um, the report talks about the sight lines from the road, etc. Uh, when we receive some of the public comments. Uh, and, and this may well change, but there are questions about sort of the site from these new dwellings into the yards of some of the existing dwellings. I note that there's some drawings uh, in the application put forward by uh, Upper Canada. Can, can we just, um, maybe the director can go through what those, what those mean. There's a cross section A and a cross section B, A1, A2. Mayor, through you. So this is uh, drawings that were attended or appended to um, the Upper Canada yeah. Consultants um, response material from the public meeting, and there are two plans there that show cross sections uh, of uh, kind of the view plane um, on two different areas along Oak Ridge. So cross section A is across, I think it's 34 Oak Ridge. Mm -hmm. yep. And you can see um, kind of the existing dwelling at 34, the proposed dwelling uh, within the condominium development, the property lines, the um, rear deck, the building or the grade elevation and change. And so you can see what would be uh, from that cross section, a um, you know the impact of uh, that use on uh, on the existing dwelling, and then uh, so what is that red line? The overlook condition. The red line yard? is as if someone's standing, I guess, on the patio and just looking down or looking out. You generally, uh, when you're standing, you know you your eye is usually within a certain um, distance and. Um, so it's, it's trying to replicate what that distance would be. And so generally you're not out looking into neighbors' properties or anything like that. I know myself, I live in a two-story house and, you know, you look down, you don't... Right, look out. You, you're really mindful and respectful of that. And, okay. Um, so it's just... 
And so that would be, if this change were to occur, that building would move a meter this way, that would actually that, that would be increase that increasing distance. Increasing that, and, <coughs> yes. And then the second same cross way. section is again the same thing. You can see the differences in grade and elevation. Um, and this is uh, kind of the perspective or the cross section from 30 uh, Oak Ridge Boulevard okay. and the impact on them. Thank you for outlining that. The, oh, a concern was uh, water runoff and in that one you can see that it kind of dips there. How, yeah, how so is that, can you remind council how that's going to be dealt with? So there will be obviously on-site grading uh, to manage and control the um, water on-site. And certainly one of the um, uh, engineering principles that uh, we require is that the rate of flow, post rate of flow cannot exceed the pre-development rate of flow. So the amount of storm runoff that is going uh, onto adjacent properties today before there is development will be the same. We can't exceed or, or increase the rate of runoff uh, on it. Those are accepted engineering design standards and practices. And so when we review the engineering and the stormwater management report, we will, um, they model all of that um, yep. through various software modeling programs and uh, we'll make sure that the um, the amount of runoff is the same. And so that's done through grading by introducing rear yard swales, uh, perhaps catch basins, storing that water underground and then releasing it uh, at the um, pre, uh, post pre-development flow rate. <laughs> uh, so there's various methods and techniques that uh, can be done through, um, through the engineering design. Um, that is something that we take into consideration okay. at site plan approval, as Councillor Kersey has already alluded mm -hmm. to. So those detailed engineering designs, we don't have at this time, but they will be coming forward. Yep. And, um, and that's some of the conditions that Councillor uh, Durley spoke about as well. Those are the conditions that Councillor Durley it, it, has referenced, This yes. particular one, this A1 cross-section B, you know, somebody looking at that could say, if you drop a bucket of water, it's going to end up in 30 Oak Ridge. So, uh, you know, off the deck sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So if that can be looked at uh, as well as part of this process, uh, I think it, it's important to uh, to look at that. That was one of the concerns that was raised. Right, yeah. And certainly that is something that we will take into consideration at that time. Okay. Um, lights was a concern, and how is that being dealt with? So yes, Same again, thing? at site plan stage, um, they are required to submit uh, what we refer to as a photometric plan. Uh, that's designed by a lighting and electrical engineer. They are certain uh, lights, and again, depending on the standard, the height of the standard, various uh, light designs to ensure that the lighting is um, deflected downward. There are cutoff shields to make sure that the light doesn't spill out onto adjacent properties, doesn't spill out and affect um, the roadways and, and the traveling public on, on the road and that sort of stuff. So that's all a detail that we look at, um, at uh, okay. detailed engineering design. I would expect that something this small in terms of development would probably have some kind of uh, small coach lamp style um, lighting uh, internal to the, the development. They will not need, you know, high cobra head right. <laughs> mask lighting or anything like that. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, quick question about the, the density. Uh, we heard a little bit about that. So 10 to 24 is sort of the area that it that it could go. This is sort of closer to the yeah, to so 14. The, our official plan does have a policy that provides for a range of density when we're dealing with intensification projects. And that range is between um, 10 and 24 units a, a hectare um, in terms of intensifying in our low density areas. This development, I believe, is at the 18 units a hectare um, uh, okay. development. Oh, so it's in the middle. Okay. Um, it's not at the extreme high end of the, uh, the range. It, it is in the middle of the range. Okay. Uh, the last one, it, there, there is comment uh, about sidewalk, that there will be a sidewalk extension Yes. Um, from uh, Oak Ridge along. Would that also, I guess, this only includes those lands with the with the units. <coughs> it doesn't con um, continue on to the next house and then the next house that's being currently constructed, does it? How are those being dealt with? Are they, will they be development agreements as well? Um, 
the requirement for the sidewalk is across the frontage of these lands. These lands. Yes. Now, we did a development agreement for the um, uh, property that's under construction right now, and I'm just trying to recall, and I'm drawing a blank, uh, but I don't believe the requirement to extend the sidewalk was included in that development agreement. I think that development agreement just dealt with the, um, the servicing uh, aspect. Okay. Thank you. Well, I know the the other property in between is going to be developed. Maybe it can be dealt with there, and perhaps the uh, developer, as a sign of good faith, will also consider uh, extending that sidewalk to the next uh, house. Certainly inquire. Okay. Great. Thank you. So the motion, I think, I appreciate the answers to those questions, and, and I wondered if there might be a, a change that <laughs> would be made. But uh, So the motion, um, Madam Clerk, that we have before us is... <clears throat> Maybe you could read that back and then Council can deal with it, please. Uh, you're talking about the amendment? The amendment, thank you. Um, yes, the amendment is just to send the report back and bring a subsequent report on September 4th. Okay. And I presume that would also be then for the bylaws. Should we deal with that when we get to the bylaws? Mm -hmm. That Councillor uh, occurs in impact, please. Okay. Okay. Um, Councillor Papp, did you have something else? Just a quick question through you to the planner. Unfortunately, I as well was not able to be here for July 3rd. So when you talk about intensification, 10 to 20 units, is this because the developer wants it or is there was there uh, something that else, because I read somewhere that they could have put up four single family homes, but this in fact is what they were pushing for, is that correct? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, the um, intensification policies are, w are what are in our official plan, and they are proposing the 14-unit townhouse um, development, which would be in keeping with the uh, density guidelines. It does require a zoning bylaw amendment to accommodate that. The current zoning wouldn't, wouldn't allow for uh, the 14 units. What was shown there in terms of a concept plan for four units was what the current um, R1 zone could accommodate. So they still have to, have we approved the zoning bylaw amendment for that? Not yet. So, so well, that's what we'll come back. My understanding is Councillor Kersey is asking that the zoning bylaw amendment be amended to allow for the shifting of um, right. that one block of units. And so we would defer approval of that this evening. All right, I understand. Thank you for your answer. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Durling. Just a matter of clarification. Is this consistent with the provincial policy plan of increasing densities? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, um, yes it is. And um, it's consistent with our current policies uh, with respect to density. Um, the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe, however, would contemplate a higher density at such time that we amend our official plan. So while our official plan has the um, current density uh, range in it from 18 to 20 units, uh, in the future that will have to be increased when we update our official plan to comply with the uh, new growth plan. Uh, but currently it's, it's deemed to uh, be consistent with the, uh, the plans that uh, were approved. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. So it has been moved by Councillor Kersey, second by Councillor Papp, that we refer this uh, entire report back to staff uh, with the concept of shifting the eastern block by one meter uh, and to bring that back on September 4th. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. And we'll have to deal with the uh, with the bylaw when we get to that as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, we did also receive two items of correspondence, so it, those were under consent agenda, so I'll take the mover and the seconder for that. That was uh, moved by Council Ribiak, seconded by Council King. Be resolved the Council receive the correspondence from Daniel Peet for information and also from Frank and Doreen Miltenberg for information mm -hmm. in relation to this development at 190 Camberwell Road. Are there any questions or comments? And we appreciate that uh, feedback. All the question, all those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Now we move to bylaws. <coughs> no, I'm sorry. 
Yes, presentation consideration of bylaws. Madam Director, what do you recommend regarding then um, bylaw number 4031, that that be, do we receive it as first reading? Do we, <coughs> Madam Clerk, Madam Director, first reading or just refer that as well? <coughs> Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, I would refer that to the September 4th meeting. Okay, so it has been moved by, let's deal with that one first. Moved by Councillor King, second by Councillor Ribiak. Uh, so we're going to deal with bylaw number 4031, being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw uh, 1136 as amended for lands located on the south side of Canberra Road, municipally known as 190 Canberra Road, from residential. Uh, RM1 zone to site specific residential multiple 1285 uh, zone. Councillor Pop and Akursi, will you make the movement to refer that to the September 4th uh, council meeting? Sure. Okay. I'm going to call the question on that uh, amendment. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries as amended. We look forward to that coming back on September 4th. Now to the other bylaws. They have been moved by Councillor King, second by Councillor Ribiak. Be it resolved, the Council of the Town of Pelham, having given in due consideration the following bylaws, do now read a first, second, and third time, and do pass the same, and that the Mayor and Clerk be in hereby authorized to sign and seal the following bylaws. Bylaw 4028, being a bylaw to amend bylaw 1034, 1985, being a bylaw to prescribe the height and description of lawful fences. Bylaw 4029, being a bylaw to enter into an agreement with Loom Investments, Inc. for the purposes of Community <coughs> Improvement Plan Program for the property <coughs> known municipally as 792 Welland Road. So that's the former fire hall in, uh, in the village of Fenwick. And there's a Community Improvement Grant Program as part of that development. It's good to see that uh, development moving forward. Bylaw number 4030 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a condominium agreement with Forest <coughs> Gray Forest Homes and the Corporation of the Town of Pelham Saffron Common. The next bylaw we've uh, postponed consideration of. So we have bylaw 4032 being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 1136 as amended for lands located on the southwest, southwest corner of Rice Road and Summersize Boulevard municipally known as 120 Summersides Boulevard, legally described as Block 126, Plan 59M434, subject to an easement in gross over Part 1 on 59R-15716, as in SN495375 in the Town of Pelham, and to amend the provisions of the site-specific RM2256 zone. Being a bylaw number 4033, being a bylaw to adopt an amendment to the official plan for the Town of Pelham Planning Area, Amendment Number 7, 120 Summersides Boulevard. Another bylaw for the same property, bylaw 4034, being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a site plan agreement for lands located at the southwest corner of Rice Road and Summersides Boulevard, 120 Summersides Boulevard in the Town of Pelham. Questions or comments on any of those bylaws? I neglected to ask this earlier, um, Madam Director, regarding the 120 Summersides Boulevard. Um, there's consideration there saying that they're, they're not complying with all of the design guidelines. Um, just a small portion is not. Maybe you can just outline for council and the community the portions that aren't. It's not, we're not talking about the, the brickwork and all that. It's just a, a couple of portions that, that aren't. Yes, Mr. Mayor, through you, the, um, uh, they are complying with all the urban design guidelines with respect to the building and its design and placement on the property. That's great. The one area where they are not is as it relates to the parking lot. Well, the majority of the parking is to the rear of the property and not out, out of view, or and is out of view. There is a little bit that is, um, you'll be able to see from summer sides, but through the enhanced landscaping plan that they are proposing, mm -hmm. Um, we think it, it'll be substantially screened, and that was what was illustrated in the <coughs> rendering that was included in the um, in the staff report. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the only area where they're 
uh, week on the urban design guidelines. Okay, thank you. It's also as a result of the the site itself, which it's is the a site itself interesting in site in terms of trying to place the buildings. Yeah, yes. in that environmental feature. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much for answering that. I appreciate that. Anyone else to the bylaws? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Now we had a couple of uh, additions to the agenda, most um, motions and notices of motion. Um, easy to say. <laughs> Councillor uh, Kersey, I think you start yeah, at 15.1. I'll just read the notice of motion and then I can give a very brief uh, logic behind what I'm bringing forward. <clears throat> notice is hereby given to the Mayor and Council of the Town of Pelham that the undersigned will bring forward a motion to create a hospitality and industry advisory committee to advise council and staff on the best practices for the incorporation of hospitality services into the operation of the Meridian Community Centre. This motion will be brought forward at the first council meeting in September, now scheduled on September 4th, 2008, and it's signed by myself and Councillor Durley, who is supportive of the motion. Okay. Um, just <coughs> to, and we'll get into it when we bring the motion, but for a very brief, brief description, um, our staff is very well positioned to handle the operations of the community center as they know it with respect to ice, et cetera, et cetera, all the things that they've had many years of experience in, in doing. One of the new additions to this community center talk is, is the hospitality of side of it. You know, it's one thing to rent a room for $49 a day. It's another thing to be able to offer perhaps a turnkey operation that would in fact create more revenue opportunities. Um, so what I would like... Provide and a service. Pardon? And provide a service as well. Providing that service. And so you've heard me all talk about the brain trust that we have in this community and the wonderful expertise that we have here. Um, Councillor Drolly and my, myself thought that this would be a great opportunity to tap into that brain trust, to that expertise, to help us as we roll out this new community center so that we can incorporate the best practices uh, as we unfold the hospitality side of our community center. So that is the, the thought behind bringing that forward, Mr. Mayor. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So it's just a notice. We look forward to the wording of the notice, and no doubt you're going to be working with staff and uh, council colleagues. Uh, on the drafting of that motion, so we would right. encourage that conversation to happen. Yep, thank okay, you. great, thank you. Councillor Durley, you have one as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll just read the notice of motion as well. Notice is hereby given to the Mayor and Council of the Town of Pelham that the undersigned, Gary Kersey and myself, will bring forward a motion to establish a Meridian Center User Group Council to assist with dialogue between user group, staff, and council. This user group council will work together to ensure the best possible communication and experience among all user groups and with the public at large. This motion will be brought forth at the first council meeting in September, now scheduled for September 4th. Just to elaborate on that a bit, uh, all user groups have signed a memo of understanding and a, uh, a agreement to what they get and, and how they get it. However, uh, my experience in the sports world Everything isn't as it appears. Uh, there are times where you need more ice and times where you don't need more ice and they're training back and forth. And I think that a, a group like this will be very beneficial to uh, be able to communicate with each other, uh, offering some flexibility in the use of the building to make it uh, sustainable and uh, also to make it run at the best possible way. So I uh, look forward to bringing this forward and having a debate on it. But certainly it's something I think that will help all of the user groups. And by the way, all the user groups are equal. So I think nobody's more equal than others. So I think we have to we have to stress that that's the point. Thank you very much, Council, Thank for you. outlining that. We look forward to that report coming. And again, you'll, no doubt you'll work with some of the, the staff on that, but also the user groups as well. And so we look forward to that report or Absolutely. that uh, motion coming. So thank you. We do not have any other matters. Um, uh, so we now move to uh, the confirming bylaw. So it has been moved by Councillor Lane, second by Councillor Kersey. Be it resolved, the following bylaw be read a first, second, third time and passed, being bylaw 4036 to adopt, ratify, and confirm the proceedings of Council of the Town of Pelham at its regular meeting held on the 13th day of August 2018. All those in favor? 
Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. And now to the adjournment. It's been moved by Councillor Lane, second by Councillor Kersey. Be it resolved this regular meeting of council be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for Tuesday, September 4th, 2018 at 6 30 p.m. It's a Tuesday because of the Labor Day holiday. Uh, we appreciate uh, everyone that has uh, stuck around for this meeting. We started with a, a large group and now there's a smaller but committed group. So thank you very much uh, for, for sticking it out in the meeting. I'm going to call the question on adjournment. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Okay, sure.